Martin. Hey, we've, man. We've had D Star discussions. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, Todd, tell me about this exciting project you're working with. Okay, so Ham Radio Packet has existed for 30 odd years. And traditionally, what you do is you take a, a smart modem that knows how to do push to talk and hook it up between the radio and a little computer. And the modem TNC is called would key up the radio when you have something to send and, and will listen for the things you put on channel. What we're building is something that uses that technology to create a very large real-time chat network. Now, if I can show you this, that's what it looks like. Cool. And basically, we have a little teeny computer that costs $35 called a Raspberry Pi, and that is a Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. And the Raspberry Pi controls a switch that gets located in the ham's house. And we relay between our houses using packet radio, using pretty much junky radios. Mm -hmm. And depending on how far you are from your neighbor, it can be little antennas. Mm -hmm. What happens at the end is that you're in a chat with 30, 20, 50, depending on, depending on your neighborhood and, 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 and where you start this. Here in Raleigh, we have 35 connected stations and we regularly get over 20 people on the chat at a time. When you type, what you type goes prop, 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 house to house to house across the, the ham radio network and shows up on everybody's little computer. On the little computer, we have a web server and a program written by NC4FG, Finn, who lives in Raleigh. And that's what creates that user interface. So that's just sitting in our web browser. And that one is the same. Is that live? Hello, wake up on there. Anyway, mm -hmm. we can have it showing up on, there you go. It shows up on, uh, on multiple screens at once if you want. Basically, anything that has a uh, anything that has a web browser can connect to your Raspberry Pi over your local network. We swear, we swear, mm -hmm. we will not use this over the internet, even mm -hmm. though the technology clearly allows it. All of our links and every single user is on ham radio, entirely on hobbyist controlled equipment. So we're fine with using commercially made equipment mm -hmm. and, and Wi-Fi or mm -hmm. whatever it takes to link site to site. But it's all controlled, operated, and usually owned by a ham, including all of our, our, our um, relay sites. Mm -hmm. And if we put up a relay site that's at an office building, ham has the key. No problem. It's awesome. And we do that. So we are right now, the furthest east station in our NC packet network is in Wendell. The furthest west station is in Swepsonville, which is near Burlington. The furthest north station is in Granville County in Grissom. And the furthest south, south station is either Apex or Pittsburgh. I'm not sure which is south. We are in six counties and growing. Last New Year's, we had a conversation on the chat with 13 people over the for a half an hour, plus and minus, of the New, Year, New Year's Eve and watching the pickle drop and all that. And we had a blast on talking about it. This New Year's, we're going to be well over twice that. We were there's 23 people on on a Saturday morning. Um, I could easily see us being at 30 people on the chat over New Year's. Cross fingers. What will we be doing next year? Mm -hmm. Now, the name of our organization and our logo is NC Packet. Mm -hmm. It's probably braggadocious. What was the word I used here? Uh, it's aspirational <laughs> that we actually are 500 some odd miles wide the entire length of the state when we're only 60 right now. Mm -hmm. But a year ago, we weren't even close to 60. We'll see what happens. This is a lot of fun. Now, one of the things that's true about this is six years ago when we started, this didn't look anything like this. We still had the idea of being real time, but we didn't have a user interface. Heck, we didn't even have a chat that would have supported 30 people. Not, a lot of the stuff that we're doing now with, with all these people on here would not have worked when we started. And I would bet by the time we get to be statewide, we're going to be using stuff that's quite different. Now, we were actually running into in the edges of a congestion problem a year ago. We were running store-bought, 1200 baud packet radio TNCs. They were costing us about $50 as kits, and they, they, they had interesting limitations, but they were a lot better than what we had when we started. We, we, went, we went from a $130 TNC that was available on the used market sometimes for $50 to a $50 TNC that we could get whenever we wanted. The problem with that was we were running into our little congestion problem, but the real problem happened in November of last year when Coastal Chipworks went out of business. They quit, retired, closed it down, discontinued the product. It actually is now available from MFJ for $80. Okay, but in the meantime, in the panic, 
KK4HEJ, Nino, who lived in Goldsboro, now lives actually, he's in the Air Force, and he got he transferred to San Antonio. He made his own. He said, the heck with this. We need our own TNC. And this is what we got. Whoops, excuse me. Sorry, I'm playing around. Yeah, no, I need to get over here for a second, really quickly. Just for a second. This is the TNC that he came up with. Mm -hmm. See if I can actually get it out there. Mm -hmm. And it has our name on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not only is this cheaper than the $50 Coastal Chip Works, which did 1200 baud for us, this thing will do 1200 2400 4800 or 9600 It also has forward error correction and actually generates a packet that's slightly more efficient than the one we were using before. This will also support 1200 baud AX25 and can be used on APRS and so on. But in our particular application, we're not using these on a common channel with 100 other stations. We Each one of our station-to-station -station hops is on its own channel. And we reuse channels county to county. But generally speaking, if you're in Raleigh and you're looking at a, at a packet link between Finn and, and Till, for example, K, K4RGN and NC4FG, they're on their own 440 frequency with no interferers. So we can actually run any protocol we can fit through our radios. We just have to publish it. So actually all of our fancy homebrew pro protocols are listed on tarpon.net slash IL2P. Um, and so we publish them. We also... Uh, Nino actually delivered a paper on IL2P at the uh, Tucson Amateur Packet Radio Conference, uh, DCC uh, conference in Charlotte this this past year. So this is all very published. It's all open. Well, as much as we can, we open source the whole the whole concept, the idea. Tarpon.net is our webpage. T A R P N. Tarpon. Mm -hmm. net. Mm -hmm. And you can find all about this. NCPacket.net or NCPacket.org mm -hmm. is listed mm -hmm. here. We actually own both domains. Cool. Um, has the stuff about the local the local network and our local organization and so on. We also have groups, I.O., email reflectors, and we have some Facebook presence. Excellent. Well, so, thanks so much. Well, we'll get on the North Carolina Amateur Radio Operator Group, too. Last, last word, if you're interested in building your own tarpon mm -hmm. anywhere, mm -hmm. we can help you with that. Cool. If you're interested in adding on to an NC, to NC packet, we can help you with that. Definitely get on our groups IO, post stuff, ask questions, and we're really enthusiastic about this. I got it. It's great. Thanks.